Welcome to TAFE Swizzy Floristry. My name's David Berger. Today we're going to do a wired corsage technique. I've started by wiring some of my materials, which you can see explanations of technique videos to explain these. I'm going to start by putting three smaller ivy leaves together, just grading them down slightly so that they're not on top of each other, and then binding them together with the parafilm. This is going to start making a spine for our corsage. I'm then going to put the smallest materials in the little rose buds and I'm going to place those on top of the first three leaves down the spine. I'm then going to add some more ivy leaves in but bending my ivy leaves on a 90 degree angle to the wire. That allows me to place them each side of the created spine so that then I'm starting to get a triangular shape for the top part of the corsage. Whenever you need to or you feel that the wires or materials are becoming loose and you can't control them, just bind the stem or the spine together with some parafilm. Then I can add in some little hypericum berries. The corsage is just like a symmetrical bowl. We need to place things symmetrically on each side of the spine to achieve a symmetry in the design that we're making. So if I place a berry in the centre, I need to place one each side to balance the design. I'm then going to start by putting a slightly more opened rosebud into the design. And again, as I've placed a few pieces of material, I'm going to use the parafilm to bind all the wires together. It's quite important that all the wires are coming out from the central spine that we're creating to make the base of our corsage. I'm then going to use the same technique of bending the wire 90 degrees to the leaf to bring two more ivy leaves out from the sides of the spine. This is going to continue and enlarge the triangular shape that was first created. I'm then going to place some more opened rosebuds each side of the spine to start to build the shape. I'm also going to place some hypericum berry in between the rose buds, but again, if I put hypericum to the left of the design, I need to make sure that I put some in the right of the design to achieve symmetry. And then again, putting the parafilm around the spine of the flowers of the corsage to hold them together. Where we've reached in the design now is roughly two thirds of the size of the shape. This, I'm going to add in some more opened rosebuds. So the, in this central part of the corsage, the rosebuds are the largest blooms. Now I've reached the two third mark in my design in the shape. From now on, the leaves and materials I place into the corsage are going to be bent over so that the wire is returning towards my body. This part of the corsage is called the return for that reason. Bend the wire over so that now the wire is returning towards the stem of the corsage. The overall shape of a corsage that we're aiming for is a kite shape. 
two thirds at the top of the corsage and one third towards the base of the corsage. We're putting the bottom flowers into the corsage in the return section. Just pull the wires down, still on the using the spine as your base. But from now on, we're not going to travel down the spine any further. When we put the return pieces of material in, our junction point is going to stay the same and the return material becomes longer, but we no longer travel down the spine with our placements of wire or our power filming. This is called our junction point and all the wires extend beyond this, but do not come further down the spine. We are now creating the stem of the bouquet. What I'm going to do now is add some pieces of Hypericum berry into the corsage. I'm also going to use some of the rosebuds at the base because this is now the base of the corsage shape. We've created the top of the kite and now we're creating the base of the kite, which is one third compared to two thirds in the top part of the corsage. I'm pushing my wires through, then pulling them down so that the wires come no longer than the junction point. To put another leaf or to extend a leaf further down in the bouquet, in the corsage, I just simply return the wire longer on the leaf. So when I put it into the corsage, the junction point is maintained, but the leaf is on a longer return wire, which allows me to extend the material down. The same with the hypericum berry. I can manipulate it into the spot and then bend the return wire longer so that the berry projects further out from the junction point. I'm now going to put some parafilm around that junction point to maintain it, but you can notice that now I'm creating a stem to the bouquet and the spine is no longer traveling down. This is now forming the stem of the corsage. To finish the front of our corsage, I've made two little ribbons that are now going to be inserted into the wire junction. I can bring the wires in, take them down into the junction point on each side of the corsage to maintain symmetry and also to make sure that none of the spine is showing from the side of the corsage. Now I'll put the parafilm down onto what's formed the stem of the corsage and wind the parafilm down to form a stem. I'm now going to cut the wires off and I want to cut the wires in line with the last projected leaf so that the leaf and the stem are aligned. I'm now going to apply the finishing ribbon to the corsage. Note the shape of the corsage is a kite shape. Two thirds that we've worked on the spine and one third that we've worked on the return. We can see that on the back of the corsage. This part is the spine and this return part is the return and here is the stem of the corsage that we've created. To cover the stem of the corsage, we place a fine ribbon on the stem and wind the ribbon down the stem of the corsage and then back up again, making sure that your, if your ribbon is a satin based ribbon, 
that the shiny or the right side is facing out. Just continually turn the ribbon up the stem or twist the ribbon up the stem of the corsage right up to the top part where the spine ended and our stem started. So I'll continue to wind up and around until I meet the junction point of the stem and the spine. What I'm then going to do is a slip knot. I'm going to extend my ribbon out from the corsage in a loop. I'm then going to pass the end of the ribbon through the loop and pull it tight. This is going to hold the ribbon on the stem of the corsage. I then take the excess ribbon off and that is now concealed all the mechanics of the stem of the corsage. To finish, ready for a customer, I'm going to place two pins into the corsage, ensuring that I push the pin up parallel with the wires in the corsage so the sharp end is not protruding out the stem so any injury can occur. This is our completed wired corsage. Note the shape. Two thirds the top of the kite, one third on the return to achieve our shape. The corsage can be worn upright with the buds facing up to the shoulder. Alternatively, some people will pin the corsage on with the buds facing down and the return facing up to the shoulder.